Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to the rustic Von Lodge. And it's Wednesday, which means it's Epic Comic Book Wednesday. Every Wednesday, I'll talk about a certain comic book, graphic novel, or comic book subject. Steve Donahue over on his channel will talk about that same graphic novel, comic book, or comic book subject. It is our world's finest team-up that we do once a week. And this week, we're talking about a comic book that's kind of interesting. That is this. This is Captain America. And the title of this is Captain America, The New Deal. So this is Captain America, The New Deal. This is a really interesting little piece of comic book history. This is a Captain America story, and it was written, because I always forget this guy's name, it was written by John Nay Reiber, or Reber. John Nay Reber, or Reiber. And I don't know what happened to that writer, that comic book writer. He seems to have, as far as I know, disappeared, but he wrote this, John Nay Reiber, and the artist was John Cassidy, and he does an amazing job in this. The artwork in this is incredible. It was kind of controversial at the time, this story, because this story was published right after 9-11. So this was published between 2002 and 2003 were the original Captain America stories uh, that were published at this time. I think that they renumbered this Captain America series again. Yeah, this was number one through six of Captain America because they have to renumber they have to cancel Captain America and renumber it every, well, all the time, basically. If you try to keep score, it's, it can be confusing. So this was number one through number six from 2002 through 2003. And it was through one through six, right? I am right, right? Yes, one through six. And so this happened. This is a Captain America story that came out right after 9-11 and before or right around the time we went into war for our decades-long war. 9-11, which was the most shocking day in American history, oddly an event I don't hear talked about that much anymore. I know it's been 20-something years since it happened, but it's something that I remember so clearly it's and I think anybody who was an adult at the time at least when 9-11 happened remembers it pretty clearly it was a horrific event that slammed the door hard on the 20th century and ushered us into the 21st century and kind of set the tone for what would prove to be or is proving to be a pretty grim century in a lot of ways and then we have this comic book. We had Marvel Comics with Marvel superheroes trying to deal with this event, which overshadowed everything at the time. It was a weird, it was a weird time. And how do you deal with that when you're writing comic book stories about superheroes? 9-11 was a criminal conspiracy that was worse than a lot of things that supervillains plan and that superheroes regularly defeated and overcame, you know. How many horrific disasters would have happened in the Marvel Universe that, you know, the superheroes, you know, they took care of it and they took care of all the supervillains super who, you know, were planning this sort of thing. But then real life intrudes with this horrific event. Now this was basically, you know, something that superheroes, if they existed, should have been able to prevent. I mean, it, two planes hit two towers. Even if the first plane got through, Thor or somebody should have shown up right quick and stopped the second plane from hitting the second tower, if Marvel superheroes actually existed. 
Of course they don't. But this event happened in the Marvel Universe because it could not be ignored. This was too huge. You can't just pretend like it didn't happen. The World Trade Center, for example, existed in the Marvel Universe up to this point. So they had to find some way to deal with this, you know, and they never really figured it out. We just had a bunch of superheroes confused about how they, about how they couldn't have, they didn't prevent this, this horrific event, the kind of thing that they prevented all the time. Hey, I wanted to break in on my own video because I make it look like here that Marvel just doesn't have an explanation for why the superheroes did not show up and prevent this catastrophe on 9-11. They actually did have an explanation, and their explanation was a reasonable one. And that is, they were all someplace else. They were all someplace else and couldn't make it back to New York in time to prevent this from happening. And like I said, this is a reasonable explanation, probably the re most reasonable explanation they could have come up with. I think the issue I have with it is that it just seems wrong. And that's probably because 9-11 was such a real event that it was just odd for me to see superheroes in it. I mean, the Ground Zero at on 9-11 in New York and Spider-Man's there. It just seemed weird. And it's because the Marvel Universe, even though it's supposed to be, you know, if you compare it to DC, it's supposed to be the more realistic universe. Really, it's fantasy land, right? And it was just weird to have something so real and so terrible become part of fantasy land become part of the Marvel Universe. Because really, think about this. The explanation is a reasonable one, but this is the kind of thing that should happen all the time. Think about how many supervillains there are. You know, master plan, world-destroying supervillains. And, you know, it's reasonable to expect that, you know, all the superheroes would be out trying to stop Doctor Doom from destroying the world, and then, you know, some other supervillains someplace else decides to do something catastrophic at the same time. Maybe more than one other supervillain. So, it's not, it's, not an, it's not a bizarre scenario. It's something that should happen, but doesn't, because, you know, it's fantasy land. Another thing, another issue with this is that it points out the problem with Marvel's continuity. And I talk all the time about the problem, the problems with DC's continuity. But Marvel has its own problems. Now, DC solves it by wiping out their universe every five years in some big, gigantic event. But Marvel tends to do something different in that they ignore it completely, usually. In the Marvel Universe, they have kind of a sliding scale of time so that the Marvel Universe began always like 10 or 15 years ago. No matter what year it is, the Marvel Universe started 10 or 15 years ago. And then you have Peter Parker, who Spider-Man, who is, for the last few decades anyway, seems to always be in his late 20s to 30 years old. But then, when real life intrudes with real events, that's when you start having real problems. I mean, you have other problems, but this is when you have real easy to pinpoint problems. Because 9-11 could only have happened at this one time. It's a fixed point. And it's part of the Marvel Universe now, Marvel history, or is it? It can't be, because Spider-Man was a little kid, or would have to be if he's 30 years old now, because so much time has passed. So all of those comics with all the superheroes running around Ground Zero at 9-11, they couldn't have happened now, because the Marvel Universe didn't even happen yet. It's, it's one of those issues. So, you know, this Captain America story, did it happen or did it not happen? If it happened, well, that brings up all kinds of problems with continuity. 
I mean, it's an issue when you bring such a huge real-life event into your comic books. And maybe that's been resolved and I just don't know about it. But it seems like kind of a big problem. Okay, back to the, your regularly scheduled video. And then we've got Captain America, who is trying to be Captain America at a very stressful and weird time for America. Where, I mean, as bad as politics usually is, it was really strained at this time. And so when this comic book came out, it was not particularly popular. And it was controversial because if you were liberal leaning, this was way too conservative and way too hawk like, you know, where you have Captain America who inevitably is battling terrorists in this. Of course he is. But if you're conservative, the Captain America in this story is way too liberal for you because he's not on board. The Captain America in this comic book is not on board with everything that the United States wants to do in this. Everything the government wants to do, Captain America is like, nah. And in that, this does represent Captain America well, because Captain America is a character who, he's, he's sort of middle of the road politically, you know. He's not super liberal, he's not super conservative. He has his own ideas about what, what are right and wrong, and he sticks to those ideas. And if the government does something that he completely disagrees with, he's not going to be down for it because he's only loyal to the American dream, right? And he feels like he needs to be a champion for everybody. And if the government, for whatever reason, makes decisions that go against what Captain America thinks is right, he's not going to go along with it. Or he will, or he will be vocal and vocally protested. And, or at least say it, you know, or at least say it's wrong, you know. So Captain America, and he, and this has been Captain America for years. I mean, he's been that way. That's how he's been represented. Uh, that's how he was represented. But so that's very peculiar. It's very difficult at the time to present Captain America right after 9-11 and before a war. It was a messy time, and Marvel Comics had to write, had to produce Captain America stories. And so in some ways, I think this actually kind of pulls it off. It pulls off a Captain America story written at a time when writing and, and just producing a Captain America story must have been very hard. It's not entirely successful, and it's odd to read it now because it is so much so much a product of its time. And there are moments in this, you know, like there are things that have become cliches and became cliches kind of quickly. Like, you know, if we do this, the terrorists win, you know, that kind of thing, that saying that statement is just was, it became an immediate cliche, but at this moment, it was sincerely meant. And so you have Captain America saying this over and over again because this happened right after 9-11. They're writing this. It's odd. But like I say, I think it mostly pulls this off, at least as well as it can. And in the beginning of this story, we're brought back to this moment right after 9-11 happened. And Steve Rogers, as Captain America would be, it's not out being Captain America the superhero. He's doing what a lot of people were doing. He was helping out, and he was trying to rescue people at Ground Zero. And at one point, Nick Fury shows up and tries to pull him away from this to go on a mission. And he says, no, this is where I'm needed. This is where I'm staying. And so right away, we have kind of a strained relationship with Nick Fury, S.H.I.E.L.D., an arm of, you know, S.H.I.E.L.D., which works for the United States government, and Captain America, who is an agent of the government, kind of, but he's also independent. And 
there are moments in this which are a little heavy-handed, like where Captain America prevents this racist guy from attacking this fellow of, you know, Middle Eastern descent. And, you know, it's because his Jenny was killed at 9-11, and at the end, it's all okay when it's, you know, that's... That doesn't really work, but at the time that this was written, you know, that was... It was clumsy, but you kind of see what they were trying to do and what they were trying to do in this story. It, like I said, it was tough to do a Captain America story at this moment. And then Captain America inevitably has to fight terrorists. So he's, he, he, there's a ter another terrorist action on American soil. And we get some just fantastic action scenes. Like I say, the artwork in this book is really, really good. And the artwork when it comes to the action was excellent. There's a particular sequence. I'll see I'll see if I can find it. Of course, I lo I'm looking for it now. Oh, yeah, here it is. So, like, Captain America has a flashback from when he was fighting in World War II. And the moment he really felt like he became a soldier was when he confronted the death and this destruction in World War II. World War II, of course, a time when a lot of civilians were, were killed. It was a war with a high civilian casualty rate. And once he was face to face with that, Captain America felt like that's when he really became a soldier. And so he's, here we have this great action scene where the ground is covered with bombs, a bunch of booby traps, he sets them off with his shield. He flies above. He lands onto the booby traps on top of his shield. It explodes. He flies through the air and lands. Off he goes. It's just this, this series of stories, which became this graphic novel, has just such fantastic artwork and their depiction of the depiction of Captain America his costume and everything is more realistic than some that we have seen before this. You take a look at Captain America in this, and it actually looks like, you know, for the time you're reading this at least, that this is a, this is a costume that he could, he could do his superhero work in, and it doesn't seem too fanciful. It is, but it doesn't seem like it when you're reading it. There is this odd moment when he thinks he might have killed somebody. And you know, Captain America, at this point, he doesn't kill folks. And so he reveals his secret identity, which is such a non-event. Steve Rogers revealing his secret identity. Because, and even at the time it read that way, because Rogers, Steve Rogers doesn't have a life you know, he doesn't even have any relationships really outside his job. I mean, the closest personal relationship he really had was with another S.H.I.E.L.D. agent and one that could, you know, take care of herself. And so he didn't, you know, and there were a lot of Captain America stories that came before this where Steve Rogers was trying to get a life for himself and he was never successful. His life is his job, right? And when he's not being Captain America, he's kind of floundering around. And so him revealing his secret identity and say, hey, this is me, big deal. I mean, it doesn't really, and it doesn't mean anything in this story really in the end. But it's, it's a fascinating glimpse, this whole thing. It's a fascinating glimpse at the time. It is just such a work that presents not only this character, but some of the way that we were trying to work out our emotions and our feelings at this exact time in American history, which like I said, was a confusing, 
bewildering and terrifying time. Everybody was on edge. It was weird. And really, it's odd that we don't talk more about 9-11 now because we've never recovered from it, really, as a country. We're still dealing with it. Politically, in our lives. I mean, the changes that happened at that time were pretty huge changes. Perhaps we've just become so used to it. And a lot of us have grown up in this world, those of us who are younger. And so it's sometimes hard to think back to the way it was before, in our worldview before. But it was a, it was a massive event. And so it's interesting to see how Marvel Comics, and in particular, this comic book, dealt with it. It's worth reading just for that. As clumsy and awkward as some of the moments were, it was sincerely done, I think. It was a sincere attempt to try to deal with this, or try to write a story that represented honestly the character of Captain America at this time. It's interesting. Okay, guys, that's all I have to say about it. That's all I have to say for Epic Comic Book Wednesday. Check out Steve Donahue and see what he has to say about it. I will catch you next time.